Hi, everyone. This is a picture of a microscope. It's from 1738. And it's a gift from the taxonomist Linnaeus to somebody who I actually don't know who it was. And I'm here today to uh, talk to you about something that I think is equally exciting as I think that these 18th century scientists found this microscope to be. And it's about how we can make these kinds of pictures without using microscopes. So this is an image of a cell that we have made using next generation sequencing. And I will explain to you how we do that today. And I will explain how we use NextFlow to do it. Firstly, I'd like to acknowledge that I'm here representing a great team at PixelGen Technologies and also our collaborative partners. And all of these people have contributed greatly to, to the work that I'm about to present. So what we study is the cell surface proteome of single cells. And why would you want to do that? Well, it plays a very important role in several biological processes. And this is in no way an exhaustive list. This is just a bunch of examples. So we know it's important for communication between cells. We know that it has, uh, can work as a mode of action, for example, when a CAR T cell attacks a cancer cell. It's important for cell uh, locomotion, when cells move around in the body. And we know that it's a uh, mode of action, for example, for antibody drugs. And we know that for all of these dynamics, it's not only about how much of the proteins you have, but where they are located. So why use molecular pixelation or MPX to do this? Well, once again, back to the microscope. Nowadays, you can take these wonderful pictures that the people in the 18th century didn't, couldn't even dream of, doing these fluorescent micro microscopy images. And here we see some T cells, where a protein called CD3 has formed these sort of poles or clusters on the cell surface. But microscopy has some important limitations in terms of resolution and also in terms of um, multiplexing for the number of, for example, antibodies that you can assay at the same time. We, on the other hand, we use DNA sequencing to look at similar or the same things. And we can do this for a thousand cells at the same time, for 80 antibodies at the same time. And we can do things like this. So this is a Europod, uh, which is a cell that is uh, trying to move around. And then a number of proteins have moved only to one side of the cell. And that's what we see quite clearly here in these examples, where you see the Europod markers on the right. They form very clear and distinct poles on these cells, while the background markers are all over the place. So with our method, you get for each and every single cell, and for all of the proteins in our assay, you get not only how much, so the abundance of these proteins, but you get their spatial distribution, and as well as how they co-localize together with each other. And you do this for a thousand cells at the same time. So think about what kind of opportunities that really opens up. So how does it work? Well, we start by fixing the cells. So we lock the cell surface proteome into place. We then bind antibodies to these that have short DNA oligos conjugated to them. And so far, nothing is really new. This is when the interesting uh, thing starts to happen, when we then do what we call molecular pixelation. Uh, then we take a rolling circle amplification product, and it goes across the cell surface, and it forms neighborhoods. And we can think of these as sort of zip codes in a city, so you know for example, which people live in the same uh, zip code. Then we do this for another round. And those connect those neighborhoods together. So allowing us to understand how the structure of the city is actually set up. And you can do this in a standard cell biology lab. You don't need any specialized equipment. You do it in a tube. And we then uh, 
run this on a standard sort of Illumina sequencer and you get your data out. And sort of zooming in a bit more on this perspective, we can see on the left here what we are doing in vitro. So we, on the cell surface, we form these regions, the A region and the B region. And then once we have our data, it allows us to construct a graph. And in this case, a bipartite graph that then allows us to create a reconstruction of the cell like what we see here to the side in silico for a thousand cells at the same time. And we are super happy to announce that as of yesterday, uh, the, the pipeline that we used to do this is released under the NF Core initiative. As far as I am aware, at least, uh, we are the first company to release a uh, pipeline directly into the NF Core initiative, and we are super excited uh, to do that. And I think that these type of uh, maps you're all very well uh, familiar with, and I will use this to explain how we analyze the data step by step. So the first few steps of the pro uh, process, we, we basically we take the sequencing data in, in uh, FASTQ format, along with some metadata about the samples, and we concatenate the data if it's been run across multiple lanes. We then build our amplicon, depending on what sort of uh, sequencing configuration you have used initially. We then do some quality control on these uh, amplicons, and we demultiplex them so that we get a single file for each sample and marker. So essentially you get 80 uh, 80 files per sample with the current uh, panel. We then go ahead to collapse the sequencing reads into their originating molecules. So we have a unique molecular identifier uh, in each of these amplicons and it allows us to sort of collapse them down. And then comes the exciting part. This is where we build our graph structure that form where each uh, graph or subgraph in this larger graph is a single cell or could potentially be a single cell. At this stage, we will also remove uh, edges that are formed due to be a very, very low percentage of chimeric PCRs that form as part of the assay. But we, using community detection, we are able to differentiate those and remove those connections and get back to single cells. In the next step, we go on to, to find what from all of these subgraphs that we have, which ones are actual cells. And it turns out if we look at the size of these graphs uh, and you take, uh, you do one of these uh, uh, graphs here and you find the point where it kind of goes steeply down, you get basically to the number of cells that you put in. And at this stage, we then identify these cells. We compute quality control metrics for them as well as uh, we establish the mar abundance of the markers in these cells. And in the next step is where the really special and interesting thing uh, starts happening. So here we calculate uh, spatial metrics on the graphs for these cells. So we're able to compute a polarity score, which is essentially a measurement that tells you how either gridded, random, or clustered a marker is across the cell surface. And we also uh, compute the co-localization score. So how often do you find two markers together more often than by chance? Finally, we build a report that you can go in and look at to ascertain if your experiment has been successful or not. And building this with Nextflow has been a great experience for us and something we're very happy to do. So what do you get out of this? Well, you get a pixel file out. Uh, a pixel file is essentially a zip archive that you can open and use which, whichever programming language that you use. We provide tools for uh, for Python specifically, and we can also show you how to do it with R. And it contains a number of uh, data frames or uh, data objects that you can, can read into any programming language you like to go on and analyze this data further. And it also plugs very well into sort of the rest of the single cell ecosystem being transparently usable with tools like ScanPy and Surat. As I said, we are super happy to be a part of the NF Core uh, community releasing this pipeline. 
not only that, but we are very interested and committed to open sourcing the software that we do. We really think it's going to improve it greatly. Uh, so you can also find Pixelated, the core software that powers all of this at GitHub and uh, at this address. Finally, if you want to know more, head to our webpage. It's pixelgen.com. If you are uh, itching to uh, uh, kick the tires on this immediately, you go to softwarepixelgen.com. Uh, you find information about the software, about the pipeline, tutorials for how you can do data analysis, as well as public data sets that you can download and uh, play around with today. And finally, we are, we are recruiting for several interesting uh, computational roles. So if this sounds as exciting to you as it is to me, you should, uh, you should find us over at our booth and talk to us. Thank you. Hey, thanks. thanks so much for the talk. We've got a couple of questions around uh, how good do the antibodies need to be in order for this to work? I have to pass on that question. Okay. I, I actually don't know, but if somebody is uh, very interested in that, I can, they can contact me and I can pass it them along to somebody that, that knows that. And, and then if you think about the, the proteins that you can quantify in a single experiment? So we, we have 80 uh, proteins in our uh, panel today. So if you, if you buy our product, you get 80, 80 proteins. Awesome. And then uh, when you think about, like, what, what were the main reasons that, that Pixelgen in particular decided to go down the, the NF core route as opposed to just building something yourself and, and, and keeping it there? What was the, what was the, the, the logic for, for going down that way? So, so I think that we are, uh, all, all of us, sort of uh, very much coming from engineering backgrounds and have in various ways followed, I think, the NF core and the NextFlow community across these years. And I think for us, it uh, was almost like a no-brainer to go into this to make sure that we, we give something back to the community and uh, can also sort of get all of the benefits back from being part of a larger community. Got another question around, do you know what you use for the polarization score? Pardon? For the polarization score. What? Well, what that is, that is a Moran's uh, I statistic that we compute. And, and then how, how do you think about the difference between the spatial proteomics and spatial transcriptomics in terms of applications? Um, so, so I think that there's most spatial, uh, uh, spatial um, assays today, they focus on tissue. And this is very different from that, of course, in that it's working on, on the surface of single cells, not on a, not on a tissue. So the applications, of course, vary depending on what, what type of uh, material you're studying. And I should say that mentioned that for our product is also sort of based for PBMCs, the human immune cells. That's the first product that we have out now. Cool. Awesome. Thanks so much for the talk. Thank you. Thank you.